the summer right now, dead of summer, we're in the summer. It's a great time of year for moviegoers. Uh, one blockbuster after another in summertime. Problem is, it's probably hard for you people to know which films to see, which ones are worth seeing, which ones are no good. That's why it's time for yet another edition of Conan on the Isle. <laughs> I'm going to pretty quickly go through a couple of movies, review them, and then uh, you know which ones to see, which ones to skip. Our first film uh, right now is The Born Supremacy. All right, this is uh, starring Matt Damon as retired CIA assassin Jason Bourne. I got to say, I really enjoyed 2002's The Born Identity, and I had really high hopes for this sequel. Unfortunately, Matt Damon does not give nearly as strong a performance this time around. Sorry to tell you. Take this scene. Thanks for playing along. Take this scene. <laughs> set on a tropical island where Jason and his girlfriend Marie have gone into hiding. Now, Matt is clearly preoccupied with real-life personal matters, particularly the sagging career of his former best buddy, Ben Affleck. <laughs> it leaks into the scene, and I think it hurts the movie. Take a look. Seen anything new? No. Just bits of Geely. Man, it was awful. <laughs> I been enjoying on an ironic level. I've tried at least three times to get through the whole movie without falling asleep or changing the channel. I just can't stay with it. It's been two years since he made a decent movie. It hasn't and... been two years. Yes, it has. Changing Lanes came out in 2002. That was his last good movie. I don't know. I heard Jersey Girl wasn't bad. No, it sucked. I tried talking to him. I even had a whole speech ready on why you have to choose your roles more carefully. Now Ben has swimmer's ear, and he can't hear a thing. His speech is useless. You should write it down. No. Ben can't read. Our next movie tonight is The Lovely. It's the Kevin Klein and Ashley Judd vehicle, and it's based on the life of songwriter Cole Porter. Now, the movie explores the dark and secret sides of Cole Porter's life, but to me, the director could have handled the subject matter more delicately. I think he was a little blunt about this. Take a look. You know, I've never had the urge to be completely honest with anyone until you. It's quite disturbing, especially since I haven't been totally honest. <laughs> You knew so much about me when we met, Cole. Don't you think I'd heard a thing or two about you? Then you know about... Well, that I can be... That I have other interests. Interests, the pursuit of which some people might find cruel to you. You mean men? Yes, men. Well, then today's your lucky day. Yeah. And that dance goes on for 45 minutes of the film. I didn't think that was right. Okay, next, uh, folks, I want to talk about, very briefly, about Will Smith's science fiction smash hit, I, Robot. Now, I saw the movie last weekend. I really loved it. It's a great movie. But I got to warn you, folks, there's a copycat movie out there with a similar title that's trying to piggyback on the success of I, Robot, trying to get in on the action. So if you want to see I, Robot, don't make a mistake and see this rip-off movie instead. Take a look. Out here, Chalmers. The last thing you need is any negative publicity. But if one of these rowboats gets out of For control! The last time, Detective Harmon, my rowboats did not kill your partner. <laughs> these are pleasure craft, designed for small to medium-sized bodies of water. They're not designed for killing. And you won't mind if I take a look around. Be my guest.
understand. Okay. okay. I just got a call that that was way too stupid. So, <laughs> apologize for that. Next up. Next up. <laughs> Not robot, rowboat. <laughs> Next up. Settle down. I'll come up there if I have to. Next up is Universal Pictures' Two Brothers, all right? Now, it's an almost fairy tale like story about two tiger brothers growing up together. And for me, there was a lot of really cute footage of these two tigers running around and playing together. But about halfway through the film, there's a montage of the two brothers getting older. And then I thought that was really disturbing. There's a part I didn't like. Here it is. Okay, apparently that was funny, but very immature, so <laughs> these calls just keep coming in. Finally, there's, ugh, finally, there's no doubt that this summer's biggest hit is Spider-Man 2. All right, people love this movie. Tobey Maguire returns as the mild-mannered Peter Parker, juggling the delicate balance of his dual life as a college student and a superhuman crime fighter. Yet for me, the producers missed the mark in this sequel by attempting to infuse the story with topical references ripped from today's headlines. And you know, there's just no need for it. It's really distracting, okay? You'll see what I mean in this clip where Peter Parker and Mary Jane share an intimate moment in a diner. Kiss me. Kiss you. I need to know something. Look out! Here comes Billy Joel! That's not necessary. That wasn't necessary. Don't Billy That guy's getting an Oscar, I know he is. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, Carson Daly's here. Stick around.